Thanks for staying with us. Now, we still have Alpha Sally and Jamilo Ju Tunde Oladipo. So, we've been talking about the lockdown and you've been all textbookish. You, you, I mean, because we've heard a lot of complaints from children saying that parents are driving them off the, up the wall and, I mean, we're not giving people breathing space. You know, um, so is that your case? If that's not your case, I know some of your friends that are <laughs> complaining, even if you would not tell us. So, I, because why we brought you um, to the studio was for you to help us, let us understand each other, because From we don't know how long, yes. We do not know how long this is gonna last. So if we understand each other at this time, it will be easy for us to move forward when it comes to online learning, if this becomes our new reality. So tell me, Jomi how do you think we can help you? Okay, so I feel the, um, like you said, the way some people feel like our parents are driving up, up the walls and everything. I feel that sometimes maybe our parents misinterpret our plans. So for instance, I could be using my phone, I could be playing a game, and in my head I have made up my mind, like I am sure that after 30 minutes I am going to read. But then in the eyes of my parents, it could be like he has been playing game all day. <laughs> so, <laughs> in truth, we could actually have plans, but then I understand that they would want us to stick to those plans, which is something hard for a lot of people to do. But then, those people who actually can stick to their routine, I know that after an hour of playing game, I'm going to read. They might feel a bit agitated when parents still come and push them on the back, that go and read, go and read, go and read. I, I see you nodding. You want to add to that? Yeah, yes. Because most of us, as in me and my friends, we have this agreement between ourselves that at so, so, so time, we do this, we do that. And all of us were excelling academically, yet we still find our own way to enjoy ourselves and play games, depending whether it's from now to eight or from now to four o'clock the next morning. So I just think that if the parents really understand the child, then there won't be any problem of the child being driven up the wall by the parents because the child just the parents just needs to see it from the child's point of view. The child has already made up his mind, like Jojo said, that he's going to do so 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 thing and so 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 time. So if the parents can try to understand the child, then there won't okay. be any problem. So you are asking us to trust you blindly? No, 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 no. no. Not blindly. What you're saying is you no. need to understand your child and know what works for your child. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, like so that. that's what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Now, Jomiloji, you're supposed to go to uni in September. Are you yes. afraid this is going to mar your chances of um, I wouldn't say mar my chances, but I would say... Delay. Yeah, delay. So sometimes I would say I can't wait or so, and my parents would be like, "Why are you rushing to that?" <laughs> because we're just going to write your final exactly. Exams so I guess they're happens. happy now, kind of happy because I'm still here. And well, it's it isn't the best idea of delay my chances in my point of view because I feel I should go do what I have to do in university, get out and. Start life. <laughs> life. Try and start life. But mm -hmm. then they say I should take my time and be patient. And I don't mind really. But as long as I know that in this time that I have now, I'm using it to the best of my abilities. I'm reading when I can. I'm playing when I can then. It's fine. Okay, so we have um, um, comments on our questions on, on WhatsApp. Sean has said, um, sent in a message. He says, I think the most challenging part of this online learning is that some people aren't able to adapt to technology yet. You have debunked that because your school <laughs> yes, introduced so I you even go there many years ago. <laughs> Nathan says, I think the challenge is that some people are not able to join um, the call. Which call is he talking about? Okay, maybe when, have you had Zoom classes? Yeah, so how has it been, you know, well, especially with technology, the struggle was, with your yes. school? So, uh, to, um, like my school now, we do Zoom classes at least like two or three times every week. So. Yeah. We don't have the majority, but like we get a very good number. So um, not all of you enroll at that time? No. We could join at different times because there are different classes always taking place. Is there any penalty for that? Um, for not joining? Or our teachers joining? are aware okay. when or when not we join, so they could always just talk to our parents concerning it. Well, I know that we always get a good number at every time, and for those people who are not available, maybe due to network error or data issues, then these classes are recorded and also put on the website. So if you weren't around, you can still watch it wow. and download it. You can watch awesome. it as many times. So for Alpha, have you had challenges with the Zoom classes online, you know, since you started? Or maybe doing your work and all that online? Yes, at times. But the thing that our school does 
is that when there is a problem and it's not coming from us, it's coming from the school, they don't charge any penalties concerning it. So let's say there's an instance that somebody, no, somebody tried to connect to the website and then from the school... Maybe the server was yeah, down. Yes, exactly. The server was down. So the school wouldn't charge you. It, it, the school wouldn't penalize, penalize you, you. Yeah. for not connecting to it. So, but like, if it's individual, individual and it's really not your fault because of internet access at that time, then you're still going to get penalized? No, no, they wouldn't penalize us if it's actually not our fault. They would rather talk to our parents and try to figure out what is what going on. What went wrong. Exactly, what went wrong. But if it's like a decision, like you just decide, I'm not going to attend this class, then yes. But does it feel <laughs> real? What's the feeling when you're on Zoom? How mm. is it? How I would say it is, is for every class that you attend in person, like back in school, yeah. there is a certain level of degree of which you concentrate. And I know that for some people, while they're concentrating, just knowing or knowing for a fact that there is someone beside you, like just their presence, maybe them to concentrate or both of you saying the correct answer at the same time could bring this sort of like synergy to it. And then so you don't really like get that on online classes because of data issues, network, and maybe not everyone is being there. But then just that feeling of like everyone being at a place at one time, maybe even if you are collaborating on a question, it's okay. not something you would get to do your best. Okay, so someone is asking, EC is asking on WhatsApp that how active are your parents in ensuring you learn and have your classes online? And do you have time to socialize online? Uh. <laughs> Okay, our parents are very active. I mean, you're actually here, you can't see that for yourself. So. <laughs> but that second aspect of socializing, I wouldn't say it's at the best point. Because our parents expect us to be all oh, work, 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 because we are at school, we're supposed to be at school, we're supposed to be learning online, and they don't realize that the time even that we school, used to, even in school, exactly. You socialize. Even in school, we have to socialize. That is what brings the energy that we used to learn at the end of the day. So, if there could be that kind of, would I say, understanding? Uh, yeah, understanding. Yes, that kind of collaboration between the parents and the children when it comes to socializing and academic work, then everything would turn out fine. Hmm. Okay. Well. All right. So um, we have charity. Ladi Babatunde joining us via Zoom, and we have a parent, Morenike Basharu, Dr. Morenike Basharu. They've joined us via um, Zoom, and they, they are discussing, we're still discussing adjusting to the online um, school. Let's have Morenike first. Morenike, as a parent, you know, how has it been like the challenges that you're facing um, um, having to watch your children do the online schooling and monitor their work online? Um, good evening. Good evening, Dr. Morenike. Um, good evening. I'm glad to be here tonight Thank to discuss you. this issue. Um, I'm a mother of four. I have um, my I have a 13 going on 14, a 12 year old. I've got a seven, and I've got a um, three year, a two year old boy that will be running around when um, the um, his older sisters <laughs> are in school. Okay, so school starts for them at eight. AM for the two older ones in secondary school and for my seven year old she starts at nine. So for the two older ones it's easier because once they log on to school they're fine. They're able to concentrate. What I do is I just peep in once in a while to be sure everything is going on fine. You know, and sometimes um, I get I get to just listen on because for me I think it has an opportunity to even, you know, listen on, on the way they are being taught in school. My two older ones are in boarding school. So this is an opportunity that I'm actually listening to the way they have been taught. And I see that they interact really well. You know, um, they have interactive sessions in class and it, it's good. But obviously, um, the impact for the online learning cannot be um, compared totally to classroom learning because sometimes I see them struggle to be in class at 100 percent, which um, sometimes is a problem. You know, and sometimes you have their little brother wants to, I, I try to take him out of the way so that they can concentrate at 100%. You know, so um, then another challenge that I see when I was discussing my, with my um, daughters, the older ones, is because I asked them, you know, what's the impact like? Are you enjoying it? And all that. They are coping well because it's not so strange to them. You know, they're coping. But the thing is, they, my older daughter, 
was telling me about um, availability of like the library, you know, seeing that they have hands on is who they're able to use like laboratories for their science subjects and things like that. Then she loves drama. And for drama now, they are being touched more of the theoretical part of drama so she's not able to do they're not able to do their monologues they're not able to put emotions into the acting and all of that you know so there are challenges um with the, the online learning but all in all i guess they're coping well and i'm sure with time it's going to get better and better all right so let's talk to charity you are the expert <laughs> how would you think parents um is charity there yes i am okay Hi. thank you charity for joining us this evening Thank you so for how would me. you think um, would be an effective way to, to adjust to this online learning for parents? Okay, so I think the starting point would be for parents to realize that this is the new normal and that even when COVID is over, it's not likely that we will entirely go back to um, brick and mortar. Now, what has happened is that the world had actually been moving and gravitating towards online learning and online everything seeing that we're in a digital world. But I think parents just, maybe because they were busy at work, they didn't catch on fast enough. All of a sudden, this has thrown us into this big pool and we're having to do many things, grapple with our children in school, grapple with trying to work from home to, and all that. But there are a couple of things that can be very helpful. And when I was listening to the young boys talking from Olashere and even um, Marenike, they actually alluded to some of them. One is the fact that discipline is very important. And when I say discipline, I'm talking of discipline on both sides, the sides of the parents and the sides of the children. Now, Nigerian parents typically are known to be very extra. You know, yes. so um, when Marenika was talking, she was talking about the fact that sometimes they're not concentrating. Um, perhaps it's an assumption that even if they were sitting in class, they would be concentrating 100% of the time. They probably would get distracted, but somehow we just don't catch that. So this is a good opportunity to know, you know, how their attention span is and how they can make the adjustments. Sorry. Another thing would be balance. I think one of the Olashere boys, when he was talking, talked about the fact that parents need to understand that uh, they need to socialize. And that is a critical part of making sure that this whole experience works out for everybody. What happens is that in this COVID situation, there's a lot of stress. And as hard as it is for parents to understand, our children too are under a lot of stress. They have never seen this kind of thing before. So we need to cut them some slack. That's the truth of the matter. We need to make sure that the uh -oh. environment is not just conducive for them to do their work and all that, but also emotionally and mentally conducive for them. If you have a parent consistently breathing down your neck, there's no way you're going to learn. In fact, you'll be in a hurry to go back to school. You can't wait for the whole thing to be over. So we need to understand that these are strange times, but it is the new reality. In fact, it's the reality. And I think what our focus should be more on is making sure that they actually can thrive and live in this world going forward. Because with the best will in the world, we can't be with them 24 seven. So Absolutely. we need to equip them with the skills that they need to thrive in this kind of environment going forward, okay. which is where you're doing quite a lot on online. Marenika also talked about the fact that um, there are some of the uh, more practical classes that they cannot do, e.g. drama and all that. I know that some schools have gotten quite creative. So what they're doing is they do some drama, they do some exercise, physical education and all that online. And, you know, I think it will also help parents if we understand that for our children who are digital natives, if they can actually go online and play games with people that are thousands of miles away and feel that they're actually in the same space, then even things like drama and some other things that would require a lot, a bit more hands on would be OK for them. So I, I guess it's understanding on both parts, part of the students and the part of the parents. OK, so my question is, um, how sustainable is this model? How inclusive is it? Because we're talking about children who go to a little school. They might have, have, have access to internet and all that. But what about children that do not have access to these things? How sustainable is this model for them? OK, so the thing is that it depends on how sustainable we as a country want it to be. Um, the world had gone digital a long time ago. And the truth of the matter is we were not very proactive. We need to, the starting point, the starting point is access and connectivity. And it is not the responsibility of schools or only parents. 
It is the responsibility of government and corporate organizations. They need to realize that if we actually want to make progress and move forward as a nation, we need to include everybody. Just look at the lockdown situation. The problem is coming from those who are sitting at home and saying, look, we have nothing to do. We live on our daily, um, daily, daily allowances. Yeah. It's going to be the same thing when it comes to education. If the children do not have access, at the end of the day, it will be everybody's problem. So I think, yes, COVID caught us um, napping in wise. the sense that nobody expected it. So we're having to do a lot of um, emergency work as regards our health care. Mm -hmm. We have an opportunity with education. Hopefully, we're not too late. Government needs to rise to the occasion. Corporate organizations need to realize that connectivity and access has to go deep into the hinterlands and not just leave it in the urban um, urban cities. Okay, so let me come back to Morenike. Some um, someone is asking about the cost of um, buying gadgets. He said, "What are the challenges they, um, that they are currently facing, having to deal with the prices of Android um, gadgets, mm -hmm. the cost of data? Is it enough to meet their online lecture time?" Um, do you have that problem, Morenike? Are you, are you part of those parents that are complaining about the cost of running an online platform learning? Because you have about four children. Um, well, um, I, won't, I wouldn't say I'm complaining about it because this is the new normal that we found ourselves and we have to make, um, we have to make, yeah, we have to make it possible and as much as possible you know, achievable for the children. So I'm, I, I don't con I'm not complaining about the cost of these devices because we know the children, we have to have it for us to go online. But what I look at is, look at, I'll look at the school that is charging, the bill the school will be charging, I expect a discount from the school. The school should put into consideration that parents are going to spend money buying devices for kids. They're going to spend money for internet connection. They're going to spend money on uninterrupted power supply for the children to participate at 100%, you know. So I will complain about getting everything I need to get for the kids, you know, to be able to achieve this as best as we as they can. But I will expect the school, you know, to understand the situation and understand that the parents are going to incur bills, so they give a discount on tuition. So you should reflect on <laughs> well, school I think we can leave the conversation there, but do we have a final word from Charity? If you want to, Marenike and Charity, just give us final thoughts, your advice to parents, um, 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 Dr. Marenike. And um, for Miss Charity, if you can give yeah. advice to the children, what would that be? Okay, it would be for them to... Okay, Marenike, you go first. Okay, all right. My advice to parents is this. Um, like the children mentioned in um, the studio, that the parents should be realistic, you know, of their situation. I would, I would advise parents to have a routine, a schedule, and understand that the children, in as much as we want them to work, we need to understand that their children, they need to play and they need to do other things. So as parents, we should help them at this time. It is a shock to their system. So we should help them as much as possible, you know, to balance out in academic learning, in um, having fun, in create, being creative and being innovative. You know, so for me, I try to, you know, come up with different activities to carry all my four children along. The other day we were running outside, having water play, doing water play. The little two-year-old was very excited. The older ones were excited. We all played and I was with them. I played with them. So, we, and the other time, you know, I was teaching them presentation skills as well. So I want them to learn new things, but I try to come down to the level at which they understand. And the time to do academic work is time to do academic work. So I think at this point, parents should work together with the children, you know, so that they don't get frustrated and let's understand their situation so they can get the best thing. That's the perfect summation. Thank you, Dr. Marinke. So um, our, our parenting expert, um, Charity, if you can hear me, what's your advice to yes. students? Okay, so I mean, for me, it would be to tell them that this is the, the way life is. The truth of the matter is that it does throw curveballs, but your ability to be able to self-manage because your parents will not be there 24 seven. They will not be there with you all the time. This is a good opportunity for you to see how you can manage yourself, hold yourself accountable and be responsible to do the things you need to do at the right time in the way you're supposed to do it. That's a perfect summation. We've been telling them. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us this evening. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. Now we have a lot of questions online. Um, but I don't know whether to give you the questions 
um, people are complaining about. Now, these are, here are the complaints of parents. Um, Lydia says, Linda, oh, Linda says, my son skips some online classes with claims that it is boring, you know. How do you think we can make the online classes a lot more engaging and interesting for you? So maybe, Joju, you'll okay. start first. So again, I feel that things that you partake in can only be as boring as you make it. So OK, the most boring thing that they could be teaching you to someone else, it's something fascinating that he or she wants to learn. So if the, the classes are boring to a student, that just means that the student isn't really willing to open like his mind. Exactly, his mind to the situation sure? at, at hand. Well, okay, so let me hear Alpha's thought on that. What do you, how do you think we can make it a lot more interesting? First of all, what Georgie said was very correct. Anything is only as boring as what you make it. But the thing is that for the majority of students, these online classes may seem not interesting enough, so they don't want to put in their time, they don't want to put in their effort to achieve something with it. So if I were to give my own advice from the mind of a 13-year-old to the schools and to the adults out there that are trying to make online learning possible for us, I would say that they should try to, how would I put it, make the classes a lot more interactive. Like, because the way the teachers behave to us in school is the same way we we'll think we'll be, they will behave towards us when we're at home. So if you remember the teacher, for, with a bad memory, if you know the teacher with a bad memory, when you come back home, do you expect it to be any different? No. So the teacher and the students, the teachers should first of all try to understand the students. And then if the teacher understands the students and the student understand the teacher, when you are interactive with each other, then it, it's, will not be boring. it won't be as boring as, as, you, okay. as you think. Right. Yeah. So I was going to ask before, before the others left, um, do you think your teachers are well acquainted with these tools? Or they're just, tools. yes, or ah. are they just struggling? <laughs> yeah. Because in we need to understand that. Oh, honestly, I, I can't say that it's all of them that are well equipped or well trained to use these tools. For some of them, I will also say that it's maybe the first, second, or third time that they're using So some using of them are to struggle. Yes, so. It's the natural it's thing prone, that will happen. It's, a lot of teachers are prone to struggle with these tools. So we can't really blame them because it's also their first or second time using these. So if I were to give my own advice, I would say that they should have to train hmm. first. Okay. Try to understand everything behind the aspect of technology that we're using. So that when they are about to start teaching us using the online learning, they don't run into any roadblocks or stumble along the way. Yeah, Judge, you want to add to that? Um, yes, so I would say concerning this e-learning and technology aided learning in particular, is that, like Alpha said, you can only also learn as well as the teacher knows. So even if the teacher knows all the information on the subject but doesn't know how to present it well, exactly. then it would come out as boring to you. And I think to make sure that you aren't bored is I feel that maybe teachers, maybe if you are doing a Zoom class, or just online learning is, we know that in a normal class, as the teacher is teaching, if he, if he notices that maybe someone is getting distracted, he will ask the person a question. But I wouldn't really say that maybe on majority of online classes nowadays, I really see people posing questions to the other, it's just a lecture, the teacher just comes, talks, leaves, gives assignments and all. So if we can maybe add more questions to the case, and. Um, that would really make sure that students are attentive yeah. because if you don't answer it, you are. Thank you. So we are running out of time. No, another one. Just a quick <laughs> uh, one. We would ask that one. But while okay. she's, at, think, um, she's, uh, she's about to ask you, I want you to just be thinking what your advice would be to both parents and to students. But short, short answers. Okay. I know for some other students that don't have, or their parents do not have the capacity to put them online, yeah. would you have preferred if this learning were on national TV or radio? Would you have been different, the mm. outcomes? I would say if the, these learnings were put on like national TV, then it would really um, open the range of which people would be attentive the inclusion. to this, the inclusion of because you would say that these online learning and technology learning would only help those people who have access to it. To laptops so, and all that. Yeah, to laptops, to gadgets, to data, and with the price of things, the price of data and network, it will also be a lot of burden on parents. So if things are put on national TV and radios, then it really helped those who aren't as fortunate as others to be able to 
not lose on learning. So my question, what would, you, what would you say to the young people out there to help us, your parents, um, to do the right thing and help us too to understand you people? I would say, parents, you, I believe every parent should know their child. So know your child, know what will or will not distract him. And students, if you think you are deceiving your parents, you're only deceiving yourself. <laughs> because if you do not study, at the end of the day, it's your name or the certificate is not there. So Thank you. it's only to your advantage or to your disadvantage. Absolutely. So Alpha, what would you say to parents and to students? In my opinion, to parents, I just feel that they should try to understand their children more, to see where they're coming from, to change their frame of reference, change their point of view. Try to see your, your child through his own eyes. So if you understand your child and you guys have that kind of silence, Rapport. Exactly. So you'll be able to function well. And for the students, yes, Georgie is very correct on that one. I just feel like if you are not the kind of person who is booky booky or you're not the kind of person who is so good with gadgets, you just have to find your own way of learning. Once you can find your own way of learning, whether it's through playing with things, whether it's through reading, whether it's through writing, once you find that you'll become an excellent student and you and your parents will be able to collaborate and work together. Okay. Okay, so Lami, what would you what what would you say is your own summation of everything that's happened now? Well <laughs> <laughs> Well what I want to say is I think um the kind the online learning, I think it's a bit because Nigeria is a low level, low income earning country. Mm -hmm. So we need to include other children. I see a bit of a social in at the end of COVID nineteen, this gap is going to be wider. So I think the government should step in. And I think it should be made more inclus inclusive by put putting it on national TV, not online. I, I really do not subscribe to online. Well, for those that can afford to do the online <laughs> learning, trust me, my children learn things from all over the world. It's not about, I, I, I think- No, we for should, school learning. Should, I, I think for me, the government should wake up to our new reality because we cannot continue to limit the minds of our children the way our own minds were limited. So let's wake up to the new reality and invest where we need to invest, which yeah. is the educational sector. Thank God COVID-19 has exposed that to us. We've been saying it since, but COVID-19, yes. <laughs> now COVID-19 made everybody to see it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping that this will truly give them that wake up call. Cool. Yeah. All right, so thank you so much, Oluwa Jomiloju, mm -hmm. Tunyo Ladeko, and um, Alpha Sosa Saleh. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you can watch the repeat of this episode tomorrow at 6 a.m. and 3 p.m. And please note, all our repeat airs Mondays, Saturdays, and Sundays at 3 p.m. It's been a very, very engaging and insightful conversation. Thank you so much again. I enjoyed again. myself. Now, remember thank to you. keep all the conversations going on all our social media platforms as we continue to hear what you're saying. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. At some point, your child has got to learn to stand on their own two feet online. So we want to trust you people to stay safe when you're doing your work online. So help us to trust you as well. Mm. Is that a promise? Yeah. 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 Thank you. All right. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>